Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this is being recorded, uh, but this is my first uh, crack at using LinkedIn Live uh, to do a live event. And um, it's a pretty interesting approach. It's a lot like YouTube um, when you do a YouTube broadcast, but it's got some interesting nuances that uh, have taken me a few minutes to get used to. And uh, uh, with me, I have a student, Marcy Smith, who's actually not a real person. I'm going to be toggling back and forth between interfaces during the presentation. So this is the uh, presenter moderator interface that uh, you're looking at here. And Marcy uh, is using this interface, which is quite similar, uh, but this is what uh, the student would see. Uh, depending on what controls and features you enabled for the student, you know, to play with. Uh, so, um, just to get you a little familiar with, you know, what the, the screen differences are, you know, one of the major differences is that presenters, you know, can send content out to the students, which would show up here where the slide window is, and we're going to do that. They can, uh, you know, uh, have uh, the system check their completion status and send certificates. Uh, the instructor uh, and presenter, uh, the moderators and instructors can also toggle the display, uh, you know, that uh, is being, you know, currently, you know, sent out, you know, to students and also update the attendance record um, if additional, you know, people join or you can just leave it in automatic and let the attendance system go by itself. Uh, over here on the far right, what you see are, um, you know, the video cameras uh, uh, for each of the students. And I understand there's a little latency with the LinkedIn, you know, live product. So, uh, you know, that, that takes a little getting used to. And then uh, we also have access to a whiteboard. And you can share the whiteboard. You can make it shared for the entire class. There's lots of little tools here, you know, for drawing things, you know, uh, in the screen area. Uh, and you can put up a blank screen, you know, if you want to start with a blank screen. Uh, over here on the far left hand side as a moderator and presenter I also have you know a lot of additional capabilities I can mute the students lock the viewers uh, save their names uh, although the system's tracking that in the background so you don't really need to do that manually uh, clear any status icons create breakout rooms etc cetera, etc cetera. and then one of the other features that uh, you know we have is the ability to pull up you know session analytics uh, for your class so you can see you know where uh, everybody is and how much webcam time they've got whether there's any messages outstanding you know uh, their activity levels etc you know so these are you know just some of the the features that you know we're looking at from the uh, uh, moderator instructor console I'm currently set up as a presenter that's this little presenter icon up here and I'm also a moderator uh, and Marcy is uh, set up as a student and we've enabled her to turn on her webcam uh, so let's talk a little bit about the product itself real quick. What we wanted to do in creating uh, uh, KMX Live is something beyond what you could get out of the traditional uh, meeting room technologies, your Zoom, WebEx, and Teams. Uh, but we wanted to be able to preserve all of the basic features like uh, audio, video, whiteboard, slides, chat, polling, etc. And so the system will handle up to 49 simultaneous webcams, up to 500 simultaneous users with audio. Uh, and, you know, has all the, you know, the features that you would expect, you know, like, you know, a, a public chat room, there's private chat. If Marcy uh, wants to send me a private message or I want to send Marcy a private message, I can just click on the icon and send a private message and they'll get a little indicator that a private message has been sent. Uh, and then uh, you also have the ability to raise your hand uh, and the, the instructor and moderator can also lower everybody's hands. You can conduct polls and, uh, you know, the, the things that you would think, you know, change your presentation, share videos, uh, et cetera. You also have uh, a status indicator up here that tells you what your connection status is. And if you want to uh, make things full screen, uh, change your overall settings, do some keyboard shortcuts that uh, uh, are available, uh, those are all available as well. And you can also change your language type. You can change your layout, uh, change your audio uh, filters, set different settings for notifications and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, things that you can do uh, that are basically similar to what you would expect from uh, and get from Zoom, you know, uh, WebEx and Teams. Uh, then on top of that, we wanted to be able to support mobile devices for all the capabilities, not just the participants, but for the moderators. So if you're, you know, attending a KMX Live event and you're on your mobile phone, uh, you know, the, the screen display is going to work and you're going to be able to see what's, you know, doable. And that includes any content that's pushed by, you know, the moderator instructor. 
uh, the moderator, you know, has access to dashboards uh, that also provide, you know, for participant attention levels, score, status, location, and progress information. Uh, and we can also deliver exam surveys, games, simulations, and e-learning and micro-learning during a lesson. Uh, the system was designed to launch and record scores from any learning management system. So it doesn't matter if you've got Blackboard or you've got Cornerstone On Demand or whatever you have. Uh, yeah, the system is going to be able to uh, work with that learning management or education management system without any integration. There's no plumbing that needs to be done in order to get the system to work with, uh, you know, those existing learning, you know, technologies. Obviously, we have our own uh, learning and learning content management system, uh, which we'd love you to use. But if you've already got one that you like, then KMX Live will work with that as well. And it works pretty much the same. Uh, we'll get into the nuanced differences there in a second. Um, we also have an extensive proctored exam capability, which everybody seemed to think was really important, uh, that does a lot more than just um, <coughs> let you push an exam out to the screen. And we're going to get into the you know, features of that as well. The other thing that we wanted to do was see if we could do something better than replay videos. Because when you take a class with Zoom or WebEx or Team or most of the virtual classroom technologies out there, what you get at the other end is a video uh, of what happened during the class. And you know, maybe you had 50 webcams up and some slides or you were talking the whole time. Um, but you know, that, you know, that, that's pretty hard for a student that wasn't at the live event. Uh, you know, to you know, to be able to actually you know get engaged with, and so we wanted to be able to uh, uh, not only launch and record scores from any learning management system as an e-learning course, so the on-demand replays you know coming out of this system are fully learning courses, fully scorm conformant e-learning courses. Uh, we wanted them to also be able to take any exams, surveys, games, participate in any uh, e-learning delivered during the presentation, just as if they were actually there. Uh, and so, you know, this, this was a, a, a fairly significant lift to get us to that stage. Uh, but because we're already a learning management, learning content, and uh, e-learning development tool provider, we were able to leverage all of those technologies uh, to make this doable uh, within the KMX Live product. And it's fully automatic. Uh, in fact, after a one-hour presentation, yeah, the, the amount of time the system takes to actually generate the e-learning course is running about 10 to 15 minutes. So, uh, you know, it's relatively fast. And now you have an on-demand replay that's immediately available, uh, that's indexed and searchable, closed captioned, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, has all the features that you would normally expect from a standard e-learning course. So before we go much farther, uh, I'm going to do a little Simon Says drill here real quick. Uh, and again, this is my first time doing this within uh, LinkedIn Live, so bear with me. And as a uh, presenter, uh, I've selected uh, a conveyor that I'm pushing out, you know, to, you know, the students, uh, in this case, student, Marcy. Uh, and, uh, you know, that conveyor is going to render for me, uh, you know, what uh, the student activity is associated with that uh, element. And so in a Simon Says game, I might say, you know, Simon Says, press the up button. And then, you know, if the students are paying attention, they press the up button. Uh, or maybe Simon says, press the stop button. Uh, and then maybe I'll say, you know, press the down button without saying Simon says, and see if I can catch anybody, you know, that press the down button without waiting. Well, uh, as the uh, moderator, I can see what Marcy has pressed, okay? She pressed, uh, you know, uh, buttons one and two, but she hasn't pressed the down button yet. So, you know, I get a pretty good idea of where Marcy is you know, in, you know, this lesson and whether, you know, she's, you know, paying attention. So, you know, that gives you kind of an idea of, of how that works. And there's, you know, full screen controls and things like that for people that have, you know, smaller monitors. I'm going to go ahead and reset that real quick, uh, you know, just so that we get it back to a, uh, a slide state and move on. And again, um, you know, the, the object here is to be able to put things that are interactive. And this is touch interactive as well. So it works on your cell phones. It works on your tablets. It works with any, you know, uh, you know desktop or laptop, et cetera. Uh, and so, you know, that was a quick little Simon Says drill just to kind of show you how that might work. Now, one of the other features that I have available is I know what everybody's attention and score and completion status is. Now, Marcy's, uh, you know, actually on the same computer, you know, because she's not a real student. Uh, uh, you know, Mar Marcy is a dummy student that I'm using to show, 
you know, how this works, but she's really in a real KNX live session. And because all the attention has been on my browser as the moderator, I've got an attention, you know, uh, factor that's higher than Marcy's. Uh, and I've previously taken this course, so uh, my, my score is already preset. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, Marcy uh, is 9.9%, but not quite completed, and she's in Maryland City, and I'm in Baltimore. So you get an idea how that works. So that's, uh, you know, one, you know, thing that you can do that is kind of hard to do, you know, with any of our, you know, competitive products. You can also do the same with exams and surveys. So if I want to push out a scored exam to all my students, uh, and, you know, the students uh, on their end, uh, you know, uh, it may take a few seconds. Uh, there's some latency here that we're running into with the LinkedIn, you know, uh, product. We'll get the exam on the screen. And an exam can, you know, be delivered one question at a time or, you know, as a sheet of questions. Uh, they can be timed. You know, there's unlimited options on the exam interface. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, you know, but, you know, the object here is to get an exam on the screen that Marcy, I'm currently operating as Marcy, can answer, you know, the question and submit, you know, her answers and get a score. Well, the, you know, the instructor on the other end, uh, you know, is obviously able to, um, uh, you know, see what Marcy's doing uh, and uh, also uh, get to the point where they can see what, you know, Marcy's score was and everybody else's score that's in the class. You can imagine if you had 50 students in the class, you want to have that on a fairly condensed, um, you know, fairly condensed screen. And so, again, you know, the whole interface, uh, you know, there is designed to be able to, you know, to get it onto one screen uh, at one time. So we'll go ahead and reset that exam real quick. <clears throat> and you can see that Marcy uh, 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 has a score of 100%, and she answered the one question right, uh, and now she's 18% completed with this, you know, with this lesson. So, you know, again, give you an idea of the kind of things the moderator is getting. Now, at the same time, you know, the moderator also can pull the analytics at any point and see you know, other factors associated with Marcy. Uh, uh, and uh, we're going to get into a couple other things that the uh, presenters can do as well here in just a second. So let's move on to the next uh, thing. Uh, that was a basic exam. We also have some, you know, pretty advanced proctor exam capabilities that let you put the students into isolation cubicles, uh, you know, so they electronically can't hear or see each other. Uh, you know, you can, you know, get them to, you know, provide their ID. You can provide direct student supervision as a moderator or an instructor over any of the cubicles uh, at any time. Uh, the students' audio, video, and workstation interfaces are being recorded live while the student's taking the exam. So if they toggle over or try and look it up on Google, you know, it's going to be in the recording. And it's also going to be in the attention factor uh, uh, log that they, you know, that they did that. So you're going to be able to catch people that are doing that. Uh, you can do randomization with pool-based delivery, uh, you know, to protect your exam materials. We've got ex extensive test item type options, multiple choice, true, false, matching, short answer, essay, sequencing of assessments, um, and then you can even do your uh, exercises, simulations, and long, uh, long format if you, if you need to. Uh, with this. Uh, it's got really uh, comprehensive reporting and statistical analysis features that, that go along with it. Now, this is in a specialized configuration called testing room, you know, that this all shows up, all these, you know, these testing features. You know, you certainly don't need these for your standard classroom activity, but if you want to do an end of, you know, course, you know, proctored exam, uh, you know, uh, it's obviously doable and, uh, uh, you know, the technology was set up to kind of, you know, to handle all those kind of, uh, you know, things. So let's move on. One of the other things that, uh, you know, we find that people like to do are flashcard exercises, uh, you know, things that are interactive. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put out a, a quick little um, uh, uh, class exercise here. What class exercises, you know, uh, do is they allow, uh, you know, the student, in this case, I'm flipping back over to Marcy, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, read the instructions. Uh, and uh, this one is a time thing where, you know, best time, best score wins type of leaderboard where it puts, the, you know, the flashcards up on the screen uh, and then you select the answer. Uh, you know, based on the question, I know what a router is, uh, which are these famous buildings. Okay, so that's, this one's from Australia. 
I think you get the idea. Now, if they make a wrong selection, yeah, then they just lost five points in this one and they get to try again. But you can program it however you want, whatever scoring logic you need. You know, you can, you know, have additive score, subtractive score, uh, you know, repetitive subtractive score, which this one is. If you keep answering it wrong, it keeps taking points off. Uh, and that's Ohio. And let's see, select the Jack Russell Terrier. And then when Marcy gets to the end, uh, you know, she can see how she did. And she got a 95. She only answered one question wrong once. And her time was zero hours, zero minutes, and 51 seconds. Now, that's produced a leaderboard uh, for the, you know, uh, moderator, the instructor, uh, to be able to uh, say, you know, who won or put the leaderboard up on the screen, uh, you know, if, if, they, if they want to. Uh, so there's a good little way to, you know, get a little, you know, game. Uh, going a little promotion of uh, activity. And again, the questions were just meant to, you know, show you examples of things that you could do. Now, everything I'm showing you here was developed within the technology itself. Uh, so, you know, we haven't used any third-party tools here, uh, but you could. Uh, I mean, if you have something in Articulate or Captivate or Toolbook, it'll all run within this interface without, you know, any difficulty. Uh, it won't paint the, uh, you know, uh, the same level of detail into the dashboards, but you will get the scores through and the things like that. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, those are all things, you know, to consider. Uh, back on the um, uh, moderator interface, you can see that Marcy's, you know, if, if I had 50 students here, they'd all show up and it might scroll. If I've got 100 students, probably scroll. Uh, but Marcy got a 95, uh, total of eight slides. Uh, she only answered one question wrong. She's at the end. She's still active because we haven't reset it. And she got a time of 51. Uh, and so again, you know, for all your students, you're going to get that kind of feedback back on any activity, uh, you know, that you happen to run. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset that real quick. And toggle our display back uh, to the slides. So now you get an idea how a class exercise might be conducted, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, keep your students engaged. Uh, you know, engage their, uh, you know, tactile uh, learning style students uh, as well. Uh, a lot of customers that we work with, you know, want to be able to move on, to, you know, more complex things like simulations. I'm not going to put a full-blown simulation up, uh, but I'm going to put a short little, uh, uh, you know, simulation up just to, you know, give you a taste of what might be done. Uh, and we've got all kinds of simulations, screen simulations, computer, you know, software application simulations, um, mechanical uh, we've got one that's musical here that we can show you, things like that. But these were all built in uh, the product. These weren't built using an external tool. But again, if you have an external tool, it will work uh, as long as it's, you know, basically SCORM conformant. That's that's the one thing you're looking for is, you know, basic SCORM conformance. So let's go over to the student side and see what Marcy's looking at. So she's got this simulation. It's just a short uh, simulation on the screen. And uh, in this one, you know, she's being asked to complete a procedure. Uh, it's actually part of a much longer simulation. This is just one element of a, a you know, very long simulation. And uh, the first thing that she's supposed to do is select the right screwdriver. So uh, she comes over here, selects the slot screwdriver. And this is recording a score as she goes. Now, you really don't have to have the correct, you know, incorrect on the screen, but... Uh, in this example, what we're just trying to show is there's a little remediation of feedback. And if she had selected it wrong, then, you know, it would have, uh, you know, gone to a different remediation screen. And then as far as the next thing, she's supposed to close the uh, top test valve here. So we'll close that one. Uh, and great. Now that one's closed. Uh, so she's completed step one of the process and uh, received a score. So her score is 100. It took her 1 minute and 49 seconds, and she's passed this lesson. So that's a quick example of a simulation. Imagine something, you know, significantly longer. Uh, the, you know, the actual one for this is actually online on our uh, <coughs> demo site if anybody wants to see it. Uh, now let's go ahead and toggle back over to the instructor side. And what the instructor has available, obviously, is how Marcy did. Okay, so she got, you know, a score. She passed. She hit all the right slides. You know, etc. Uh, so let's go ahead <coughs> and reset that. <coughs> okay, I just got notified by one of our tech people that several of you on LinkedIn have been uh, booted off and can't get back in. Uh, we do have some people that are continuing on, so we're going to go ahead and do the rest of this, and uh, we'll uh, we also have recorded it just in case LinkedIn has uh, not been able to complete the recording. So. Uh, <coughs> We'll, um, 
we'll post that uh, up, you know, uh, later on today or early tomorrow, if uh, if you got booted off. Okay, so competitive games are another big part uh, of what you can do, you know, with you know KMX Live. This is going to be one of our KMX Games games. These are TV style game shows, uh, and the one that I think we've got queued up is Who Wants to Be Rich, which. Uh, I think you'll recognize uh, from, uh, you know, something you may have seen before. Uh, but it's a customizable interface and it allows you to use, you know, your test items uh, within the system to construct different games uh, following, you know, popular TV, you know, game type format. So uh, that's what KMX Games is all about. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that up. Let's see. Okay, KMX Game right there. I'm going to go ahead and push that out. Uh, to Marcy. Uh, now, <clears throat> you know, Marcy's going to have an introduction here. And I've got the audio muted for uh, this video portion of it so that I can continue to, you know, explain what's going on. Um, but she'll get instructions. This is actually available in, uh, the interface is available in multiple languages. KMX supports all types of, uh, you know, language interfaces. So, you don't have to worry about that if you've got, uh, you know, people that, uh, you know, are attending globally to your uh, curricula. <coughs> and as far as this goes, uh, after, you know, uh, you know, the instructions get through, then Marcy's going to be able to start the game. Now, back on the instructor console, the instructor, uh, you know, sees where she's at. She's active. She's currently in the introduction. She hasn't answered any questions yet. And the instructor can actually pause this at any point. Your answer is incorrect. Okay. So Marcy didn't answer question one fast enough. and uh, She also has lifelines available. I think you should select the answers highlighted in green. Your answer is correct. Answer is correct. Your choices have been narrowed down to the items highlighted in orange. Your answer is correct. Let's see how you did. Okay, so Marcy was the only one competing. She got three out of four questions right. It took her uh, 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 40 seconds. Uh, she's completed this, and uh, her prize level was $750,000. So what does the uh, moderator and instructor say? Well, they see exactly the same thing. She got three out of four correct. Uh, uh, her you know, most recent question time was 19 seconds. She has no time remaining. Her total time was 40 seconds uh, on a... You know, three out of four, she got a 75, uh, and she's, you know, ended the display. Now, <clears throat> you know, when, you know, uh, moderators, instructors like to do these, you know, live, sometimes they like to play game show host. And so uh, you've got these controls at the top that allow you to pause, and this goes for any, you know, type of interface that was developed with KMX Games. Uh, you can pause at uh, any, you know, question. Uh, you can also do this with any exam. Uh, pause at any question. Uh, and uh, then, you know, it'll give you the ability to uh, re restart uh, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> so if you want to stop, you know, uh, the game, stop the exam, stop the process, uh, as a moderator, instructor, you can do that. It's going to keep track of what the next question is, and uh, you can even set that way in advance. So if you've got a 10-question, uh, you know, game, and you want to stop at question number five and interject, and you want to just go ahead and pre-put that in there, you can do that as well. So... A lot of different options with KMX games that make it easy for you to play game show host or moderate, you know, a, a, you know, an exam in a group in, environment. So uh, these are some of the things that we tried to think of as we put this together. I'm going to go ahead and reset that. And again, back on, uh, uh, you know, Marcy's workstation, she had, you know, the leaderboard up, which would have, you know, all the participants' uh, names listed in order. Uh, as to you know how they did, so a lot of a lot of customers love to have leaderboards in their class activities. So, uh, and now you can see you know Marcy's uh, attention, uh, her completion status, uh, her score, etc., uh, have all been updated. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and toggle that back. But the next thing that we have here <coughs> is an interactive lesson. This is actually integrated with uh, Google Maps, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're uh, not going to go through the whole thing, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of how this might, you know, might work. Uh, this was again developed with, you know, the, the system, uh, our KMX author uh, product, which is free. And uh, let's go ahead and push this out. It's called uh, National Treasure Hunt. And again, I'm going to get you know the dashboard up that tells me how all the students are doing uh, and where they're at. And the uh, you know students are you know going to get the actual you know interface. I'm going to go ahead and blow that up, make it a little easier for you to see. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, you know full screen, not full screen button. Uh, so this one works a little bit better if you blow it up. Uh, and the first thing is to click on the White House. To complete the treasure hunt, you must study the information provided and make selections when prompted. And we're not going to go through all the Your instructions. Your first clue awaits you in the White House China Room. Okay, so in this one, it's telling you to select the White House China Room. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, in this room, a painting awaits. The wife of the 30th president. Okay, so now this is what Google is Maps. Name? And it's you know, uh, integrated with you know KMX Author, uh, as is you know Facebook and every every other social media uh, technology you can imagine. Uh, you know, so if you want to use social media, Google Maps, things like this, uh, you know, you're really in Google Maps here. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, you know, uh, that um, pretty sure that's Grace Coolidge. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and select that and see if I'm right. Okay, so I'm right. That's Grace Coolidge. Now it's telling me to move on to the Vermeil room. Above the fireplace is a painting of a first lady. Her husband was sworn in as president on Air Force One in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. So I'm old enough to remember that. That's Lady Bird Johnson. Uh, you get the idea here, though. We're actually using Google Maps in conjunction with KMX Authors, you know, uh, you know programming interface. Uh, and I'm going to um, go ahead and just answer one of these wrong, just to give you an idea of what happens if you get it wrong. Okay, so they got it, you know, wrong. Now you got to go find the next clue on your own. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on here. Select the correct room to find your next clue. Well, I don't know the correct room because I didn't get the clue, so I'm just going to guess it's the map room. You have been escorted Oops. outside by Secret Service and will have to wait here for security screening. When the screening is complete, you will be allowed to return to the White House. Well, that's a bummer. You found oh, a clue in a I got a clue. Okay, so I think you get the idea here. And this is Your keeping next track. Your must be deciphered at the Lincoln Memorial. To get the secret code, you must answer the following correctly. Below the portrait of John Adams is which of the following? Okay, so, you know, you got to kind of know who John Adams is to get this one right. Uh, you know, but the bottom line here is, uh, you know, you can create some pretty elaborate things with KMX Author, uh, integrated with, you know, you know, you know, third-party technologies like Google Maps and um, Facebook, and uh, it's even, you know, works with LinkedIn. Uh, so these are, you know, the kind of things that we tried to make sure that the other customers would be able to do, uh, you know, in a live event. This one's a little bit long, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, toggle back uh, here to the. Um, uh, instructor console and reset that one uh, but you can see here where Marcy is navigated to you can see that she got you know one of these wrong and uh, she's currently on slide seven uh, she, you know she's spent two uh, minutes and 14 seconds in it etc cetera, etc cetera. she's got a score of 30 uh, and um, you know, you know there, there's where Marcy's at and if you got 50 students on the screen you can see where each of them are at and know yeah, you know, that their display is active and if they're paying attention and, you know, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that back. Uh, we'll go ahead and reset that content here. <clears throat> and uh, let's move on. Okay, so the next one here uh, is kind of cool. Um, again, developed with, uh, you know, the product, developed with GameX Author. Uh, you know, some of our customers uh, wanted to be able to demonstrate that they could do you know, things like group simulators and group simulations where everybody participates, you know, you know, together, uh, you know, to do something. We thought, you know, a good demonstration example would be, uh, you know, something musical like, you know, playing the piano. Uh, so uh, this uh, simulator has two components, a teach me mode and a, you know, play me mode. Uh, I'm not going to go through the teach me mode uh, right now. I think you guys are starting to get the idea of, you know, some of the features that you can, 
you know have here but i would like to show you the play me mode real quick uh and so i'm going to go to the you know piano simulator uh we'll send that out uh, again you know the instructor is going to get you know uh you know certain stuff the student's going to get certain stuff uh and uh what we'd like to do here uh is let uh marcy uh, uh play you know the piano okay so uh this is actually uh you know a, a piano that you know can play chords so you know if we want to play chords uh we can do that uh, you know it's got a, a lot of different you know capabilities uh, but let's say that I want my whole class to play a song together. Well, obviously, if they all have this on the interface, they all have their audio uh, enabled, then they can all play, you know, the song together. I could even put some music underneath, uh, you know, where the keyboard is displaying, uh, you know, that uh, says, okay, here's what I want you to play and get them all to play, you know, a couple bars or a song or something like that. Um, and uh, everybody will hear everybody else, you know, and there's really no time delay at all. Um, so, so it actually works pretty good uh, in a live, you know, environment. Um, this, you know, this, you know, you know, minimizing the latency, getting rid of the latency, you know, helps a lot when you're doing things like this. So. You get the idea. Um, so, uh, you know, lots of different options here for you know doing simulations i'm not going to go through a bunch more i think you guys are probably getting the idea of where uh we're taking the technology at this point and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and reset the simulator here now in the um <clears throat> teach me mode um which i didn't show you but it's the same piano keyboard just you know uh you know but you know requires the students to actually complete a sequence prescribed by, you know, the instructor or the moderator. Uh, uh, the uh, instructor doesn't participate with a keyboard. The instructor, you know, is seeing what everybody else is doing in the, uh, what we call orchestra mode. You know, the instructor can actually play along too, uh, you know, if they want to. So try to, you know, try to keep it pretty flexible. And, you know, I'm just trying to show you the types of things that you can do with KMX, KMX Live, KMX Author, and KMX Games which are all an integrated, you know, solution. Um, and you, you don't have to buy our, uh, you know, learning management or learning content management system, you know, to, you know, to have all these, you know, features. KMX Live uh, uh, can be used standalone uh, without having to, you know, um, you know, have the full-blown, you know, uh, system. And KMX Live will work with any LMS or education management system. We wanted to make it so that, you know, people could adopt it without having to swap out, you know, any big components of their technology. Uh, I think I've shown you Google Maps integration, uh, but one of the things that the instructor has available to them is to bring a Google Map up on the screen uh, of where all of the participants are. They can click on any participant and bring up additional information and actually drill down to their grade book. Uh, you know, we've kind of shown you how Google Maps works already, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and move on from that one. Um, You've seen the moderator dashboard, uh, uh, you know, a couple of times. You know, I can toggle to it pretty much at any time. Oh, I need to reset that. Uh, okay, so uh, you know, there's the the moderator, you know, dashboard in this event. Here's a slide that shows you the kind of information that's being tracked. Uh, you know, the name, uh, the current score, their attention level, uh, uh, which means, you know, you know, are they paying attention to the the thing that you've got on the screen is that the the, the thing that's on their browser uh obviously you know you can't really tell whether they're you know daydreaming or not but you can at least know that you know what you want on the screen is on their screen and they're not out updating their facebook profile how far along they are what their status is and what their location is and this is by you know when they log in you know the system is going to trap you know the ip uh you know it's going to you know reverse look up that ip address that they're using to come in to uh, tell you, you know, where uh, they're connecting to the internet from. So you at least get a basic idea of where, where they are. If you're going to try and do some kind of group or regional, you know, breakout session or something like that, that's that's kind of handy for an instructor to know where everybody is. Uh, you see the moderator controls and uh, how they all work. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you know, going over that at this point. Um, but again, if you have any questions, go ahead and, uh, you know, shoot them to us. Uh, for those of you that are still connected in LinkedIn, uh, and uh, uh, Mike uh, and AJ are available uh, on the LinkedIn side to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we've gone through the session analytics dashboard, uh, and this really isn't, you know, uh, 
you know, tracking, you know, the training, you know, the, the, the training components, you know, the individual scores and things like that, that you get on the moderator dashboard. The moderator dashboard is really, you know, how's everybody doing on the things that I've pushed to them, uh, you know, so far, what's their score, uh, what's their weighted score, etc. This is more, you know, how's your session going? You know, are people connected? Are they having connection issues? Uh, you know, do you got them on mic? Do you get them on camera? How long did you have them on? Are you getting a lot of message traffic? Uh, people, you know, raising their hands a lot. Uh, have you forgotten to answer somebody who's got a hand raise up? Things like that. You know, so these are the kind of things that you get uh, on the session analytics dashboard uh, as a moderator. And again, that's uh, under this little icon over here, session analytics. So uh, <coughs> kind of gone through all that. Uh, we can also include replay user support forms. The system is integrated uh, you know, with uh, uh, tools that we've developed for uh, providing user support because what happens after a live event, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the students may have questions when they're going through the replay or a student that didn't attend the live event may need support, uh, may need help. And so, you know, the user support forms give you a way to allow the replay users to go in, ask questions, and designate somebody to respond to them. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as real time as the student ask, asking it during the live session, but at least you've got a mechanism uh, to get back to the student and a way to track whether or not somebody actually did get back to the student, you know, whether or not a, an answer was provided. And you can even, uh, you know, tag these things uh, as being you know, things that you want to, you know, make other students aware of. So uh, any other student that goes through the replay, uh, you know, could see what the questions are that, you know, you know, seem to be pertinent to, you know, uh, you know the session and, and get the answers as well. If, uh, you know, that kind of keeps you from having to re-answer the same question over and over and over again if it seems to be coming up. So the support forms are uh, pretty handy and they can be per you know, per session. You, you can have a separate support form for every session or maybe one for every course or one for every class. It's up to you how you want to organize it. But uh, again, that, those are part of the uh, technology as well. So I've talked a little bit about our free lesson uh, element development tools. Uh, this is, uh, you know, done with KMX Author. It, it's really easy to use. It uses the WordPress interface, uh, which we purchased uh, and integrated uh, and turned into an e-learning authoring tool. That, that's really how it works. Uh, we added a lot of really, you know, neat features, uh, including, you know, uh, uh, closed captioning, including the ability to include, you know, scored uh, elements, which I think you've seen several scored elements here today. It's free. Uh, it's not something we're charging for. And even if you don't use KMX Live, uh, you can go get it off of KMXDirect.com for free. We, we don't charge for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a pretty nifty tool. And again, everything we've shown you today was developed using, you know, this free tool. Uh, and it generates those, uh, you know, lesson-specific moderator control panels. Now, it doesn't have to be used with KMX Live. You can use it for standalone e-learning and micro-learning, which is actually what it was originally developed for. And then we added these new features so that you get these control panels when a student is, you know, in a live, you know, session, because uh, we thought that would be pretty cool for the instructors to be able to see how all of the participants are doing. Uh, so it allows them to monitor, you know, their scores, navigation, selection, status, and time. Now, uh, when we, you know, do a live session uh, and we use the recording feature, uh, then the system at the end of the lesson is going to generate an e-learning course that has all the elements that were delivered during the live event. Uh, and the slides themselves that you had become the menu, you know, to navigate. So, you know, if you want to go navigate, you know, within the replay to when the uh, instructor, you know, pushed out, you know, uh, you know, some, you know, simulation or exam or uh, game, uh, you, you know, you have the ability to do that. It uh, has, you know, the ability to have weighted scores, you know, for any uh, interactive element. So, you know, you can still make sure that the, uh, you know, participant completes all the requisite elements uh, in order to get, you know, graduate, in order to get a certificate of completion out of the system. Uh, but uh, again, it's fully interactive and it's the only technology on the market, you know, that can do this. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to generate these lessons. Uh, and it works on any device. It has a collapsible thumbnail navigation menu, full text transcripts with search navigation features, uh, you know, your web VTT captioning for the hearing impaired, uh, and media text overlays for the vision impaired. So, you know, it's a full-blown SCORM e-learning course that'll play in any LMS. 
uh, you know, you don't have to use our LMS. It'll play in any LMS. Uh, we've tested it across the board. Uh, and again, because it's fully SCORM performant, that makes it, you know, pretty easy to, uh, you know, to leverage and use. Now, our KMX administration, you know, console, this is KMX Enterprise. This is our, you know, uh, you know super high-end solution for, you know, the really big, you know, organizations and companies. Uh, you know, provides a lot of menu options here, uh, you know, that are pertinent to a live presentation, such as administering classes, administering resources, and uh, activities. Uh, and so, um, it's fully, this KMX Live product is fully integrated with our system, of course, and it started that way. In fact, uh, when we developed KMX Live, you know, initially and first fielded it, it was only available to our customers and all of our customers got, you know, at least one room for, you know, for free because we wanted to get them using it. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> then we thought, you know, this is a pretty good product. Let's go ahead and make this available to, you know, Cornerstone, Blackboard, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, other uh, LMS systems. And uh, we spent uh, probably about seven months uh, you know, uh, in the back end uh, of the system, you know, making it so that it could work with any uh, LMS. So let's talk about how that works real quick. So if you got a third party LMS, you know, uh, not ours, but somebody else's, uh, like I just said, then, you know, you go to the KMX interface uh, on kmxlive.com, enter the event information, uh, and it's going to generate a SCORM package. Uh, you enroll your users, you conduct your live event, uh, and then after the live event, you approve the re replay. Now, from the LMS perspective, uh, you know, the LMS works like it works with any other lesson or course. You know, so if you're using Blackboard, they don't see some new, you know, controls or interface that they haven't seen before. They're seeing, you know, the Blackboard, you know, uh, launch lesson uh, uh, icon or the, uh, you know, Cornerstone launch course icon, uh, just like, they always do. So, you know, for your users, they don't see anything different uh, than what they normally see in the LMS, you know, however you've got it, you know, set up. But when the thing launches, instead of launching any learning course, it's launching, you know, KMX Live in a live room uh, at the prescribed time uh, uh, of the event. And then once the, you know, the event's over, if you recorded it, uh, you get the, the chance to go back to the KMX console uh, and look at, you know, the replay, uh, and you may want to make some tweaks or adjustments to that, uh, and then, you know, approve it. And if you approve it, then all the students have access to the replay uh, in your, uh, you know, third-party LMS without having to re-upload the SCORM package. That same SCORM package that was loaded for the live event, uh, you know, is smart enough to know that the event's over, and if the replay is approved, uh, you know, then, you know, uh, it'll launch the replay instead of the live event. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of a, a unique feature in the market. And, you know, the students don't have to log in to KMX Live. The LMS logs them in. It's fully integrated from authentication all the way through to getting the information from the live event or the replays into your reporting tools within your third-party LMS. So it's fully SCORM conformant. It's writing information, uh, you know, that your LMS will understand that, you know, can say what the weighted scores are, session times, who attended, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All, all that information is being you know, provided to your LMS, and you don't have to do anything. There's no plumbing here. There's no wiring. All you've got to do is, uh, you know, you set your event up in KMX Live and uh, upload the SCORM package to your LMS, and you're done uh, you know, until the event's over, and then just review the event before you approve it for replay, and now everybody has access to the replay. We tried to keep it really easy and simple, minimize the button clicks that you had to you know, worry about. If you don't have an LMS, you're a small organization, or you know you're just getting started with virtual classroom, we do have a standalone email option as well uh, that runs completely off the KMX Live console, and it also provides extensive reporting, you know, uh, you know, equivalent to any LMS on the market. So, you know, you can go in. In fact, you know, in my opinion, it's it's better than most LMSs on the market for reporting. Uh, you know, because it gives you a lot of information you just don't get uh, on LMSs. Like, how did Susie answer question three? Yeah, for a lot of LMSs, that's a yeah, that's a real challenge. I'm, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah, those are the the kind of things that you get with the reporting tools on KMXLive.com. We've got three room configurations: a conference room, training room, and test room configuration. The conference room is really designed for your normal virtual classroom. Provides up to 100 seats with audio and lets you have five active webcams at any time. Uh, that, that's how it's, you know, you know, baseline configuration is. What we're trying to do is keep this thing priced in a way, you know, to where, you know, you know, easily affordable for, for, 
for anybody you know to use. Uh, our training room is meant for more collaborative events. It's pretty good for simulations and you know doing things like that. They all work with all the different product types, but in the training room you get a lot more collaboration. Twenty seats, twenty video cameras. Uh, you know uh, everybody has audio. And the testing room configuration. That's where you get the uh, testing cubicles. Uh, you know, the full proctoring, you know, capability, the ability for the moderators to enter the cubicles, uh, and it's recording the student's audio, webcam, and screen simultaneously, so that you can review it later and have a permanent record of that test. So if the student tries to, you know, you know, to use notes or do something untoward, you know, you're probably going to be able to catch it in testing room, just as if you were in a testing center, because as a moderator, I can go in and look at, at what's going on and it doesn't really matter if I do because it's all being recorded as well so if I got any questions as to whether somebody you know did something that uh, you know didn't uh, you know seem on the up and up uh, then you know testing room going to catch it it's also going to catch uh, you know anything that the student does with their workstation uh, as well uh, if they you know shift screens to you know to try and look something up on Google all that's going to be tracked and you know, you're going to know okay well we got a problem here uh, but uh, we can do special configurations up to 500 seats and up to 50, you know, active webcams. But most clients only need that once in a blue moon, you know. So you know, you don't want to charge them the big ticket, uh, you know, for you know the 500 seat, 50 active webcam room if they're only going to use it once a year. So you know, uh, we just thought it would be a whole lot more practical for the customers to get the kind of room that they wanted, use the room that they needed, you know, for the 99 percent of their. Uh, you know programs and then you know on the blue moon in environment where you do have a 500 seat uh, you know, requirement uh, and you want to run up 50 active webcams fine uh, you know we can individually you know you know provide that on an instance by instance basis or you can buy a room we've had you know two customers that have bought the big you know you know the big mega rooms uh, but you know we'd much rather uh, you know give you some value here uh, and not charge you for you know the mega room if you're only going to use it you know two or three times a year for your annual conference or things like that uh, where you're doing annual training you know for a, a large group so so how is this thing priced okay well we've got a bank credit they're a dollar a piece you get 20 free uh, just by registering on kmxlive.com and this is you know for the customers that are using a third party you know LMS uh, not using you know KMX. Obviously, the pricing options. If you're using our LMS, uh, KMX Enterprise or KMX uh, ASP, uh, you know is you know there is no price. We you know we give you the rooms for free, uh, and you can buy additional rooms. But you know you at least have one room you know to work with. And if you need more, that's great. Uh, but the clients that don't buy our LMS, well, we charge a, a dollar uh, you know per event credit, which is one hour of trading room. Uh, or uh, it takes two credits to you know to ring up the bigger rooms, the conference room and testing room events. Uh, those are you know two credits. So you know, you, you just think about it as two dollars per hour uh, you know for those rooms. So you know, relatively affordable uh, you know to run your event. So if you had a ten hour you know ten hours worth of training and you know you had you know uh, twenty participants per you know per session and any combination of how you want to run it, you know uh, you know you're you know, you're talking you know ten bucks. Uh, but again, you get 20 free just by registering just to try it out. So it's, you know, no harm, you know, to try it. You don't have to give us a credit card, you know, to try it out. We don't, uh, you know, we don't require you to, you know, put in a credit card. We're not going to charge you, you know, to try it out. So you get your 20 free credits no matter what. Uh, the annual room purchase agreements, uh, you know, uh, allow you to buy a room that has unlimited use. And it's just like a physical room. It can't be booked for overlapping events. But uh, other than that, it's your room. <laughs> Uh, and these, you know, uh, you know, you know, are like five hundred dollars a year. Uh, so, you know, very price competitive to you know anything else out there on the market. Uh, you know, as far as being able to provide these kind of capabilities and have your own room that you can schedule, you know, at le your leisure uh, and use with your learning management system, uh, and uh, you know, get all the information back to your learning management system with all the features that we've talked today. The last thing that we offer is storage subscriptions for clients that you know want to broadcast to the world. Uh, uh, you know, so you know if you're gonna you know do a lot of events and you're gonna uh, you know record those events and you want those on-demand replays of those events to be available to an unlimited audience, we have uh, subscriptions that let you leave that stuff out there forever and open it up to a much larger audience because obviously there's no 20 seat limit on a replay. Uh, you know, it, you know, it's an on-demand e-learning course. But if you want, you know, to you know, run that off of our servers, 
uh, well, yeah, you know, you know, we're going to have to charge something for it. These are, you know, very, you know, affordable, uh, but it just, you know, covers our cost of providing the storage and bandwidth for you to do that. So, we're at the end. Uh, I don't know how many of you made it to the end through LinkedIn. I know, uh, you know, our tech support people are saying a couple of people were, you know, dropped off, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but again, we'll get this up, you know, uh, you know, either this afternoon or tomorrow, and uh, uh, you know, make sure that uh, uh, everybody has access to it. Um, so, what I've tried to cover today is that KMX is really, you know, KMX Live is really unlike anything else you've seen. You know, it does things that you're just not going to pull off in any third party virtual classroom or meeting room technology. There's no way, you know, Zoom can do this. There's no way, uh, you know, uh, go to meeting or uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, you know, WebEx can pull off the things that we've shown you today. These are really unique capabilities. We've got over 20 years uh, of experience, uh, you know, with, you know, our virtual classroom products, and this is the latest and greatest. Uh, I think you've seen that our moderators uh, and instructors get the dashboards with information that's really detailed. And they can drill down not only into the live information, but they can also pull up things like the student's grade book, your progress, uh, you know, on previous lessons, uh, you know, attention score, role, location. All that information, you know, can be, you know, brought up by the instructor or a designated moderator, you know, to try and help somebody along or to, you know, just make sure they're on track. Uh, your on-demand users get the same experience as the live attendees. And we've got lots of stuff available uh, online, and I've got several on my LinkedIn, uh, you know, profile that you can go through and, uh, you know, try yourselves. And they get the same experience as the live attendees, including the ability to interact with all the elements uh, delivered in, during the live event. So, you know, if you delivered a test and, uh, you know, you expected the students to take it to get a score to pass your session, well, guess what? Uh, they get that, you know, they get to do that. Now, KMX Live records the participant progress scores, session times, and completion results, not only to our LMS, but to any LMS. Uh, and there's no integration expense. It'll also launch from any other LMS uh, with no integration expense. You don't have to pay for some, you know, fancy Dan IT supported single sign-on integration because we've already taken care of all that and we've tested it. So if you don't have an LMS, uh, KMX can, you know, fully operate, generate email invitations for the events and provide, you know, extensive reporting features. But again, you know, most of the larger clients that we work with either use our LMS or have, you know, their own LMS. And, uh, you know, that's fine. So if you want more information or you'd like to, you know, schedule a demonstration, go ahead and contact us at info at KMSI.com or call us at 410-929-2615. Uh, alternatively, just go to kmxlive.com and, uh, you know, try it out uh, because it's free. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to give us a credit card or, you know, anything like that to, you know, to you know, do your first, you know, 20 event hours. You can do up to 20 event hours uh, without uh, any charge whatsoever. And then it doesn't charge you at that point because we don't have any way to charge you. You know, it just, you know, tells you, you know, okay, your 20 event hours are up. You know, you want to do more, you know, you got to buy, you know, something. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you buy 50 credit hours, you know, for 50 bucks. And now you've got up to 50 more event hours to, you know, to play with. So, you know, it, it's really, you know, cost effective. I mean, that this isn't, uh, you know, you know, something that, you know, is going to run you at thousands of dollars worth of bills. Uh, and uh, if you want, you could provide a room for every one of your instructors, professors, or uh, uh, teachers, you know, at a pretty reasonable price, uh, you know, for $500, you know, to give a professor a room for a year, or that that's really not, you know, a, a substantial amount when you consider the value that you're getting out of the tool and the fact that you have this whole content management repository, uh, you know, being built as your professors or instructors, uh, you know, or teachers, you know, are uh, developing uh, and, you know, preparing lessons. So if you've got things that, you know, happen over and over and over again, well, you know, obviously putting something together, you know, becomes quite easy because underneath KMX Live is a full learning content management system uh, that, you know, you know, that, you know, allows you to leverage, you know, those kind of tools and technologies uh, to speed along the, you know, development of your presentation material. So, again, thanks for attending today. Uh, I apologize for those people who got booted off of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, again, we will get this out, you know, hopefully, you know, either this afternoon or tomorrow. And uh, uh, most of you are connections of mine on LinkedIn anyway. If you've got any questions, feel free to, you know, send me a private message. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll be happy to respond. And, 
uh, hopefully our next uh, event on uh, LinkedIn Live doesn't uh, you know have any you know difficulties. So uh, have a great uh, Memorial Day weekend, and uh, I'll let you know when our next event is scheduled. Thank you.